Well, hello, Internet. Many of you guys have asked me to do a PHP tutorial like I did with JavaScript and Java, and so here it is. In this tutorial, I will teach pretty much the entire PHP language in one video. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is going to be the basic format for this video tutorial. Over here on the left, I have a basic text editor. Over here on the right, I have Google Chrome, and it is going to run everything for us. Now, what I did ahead of time was I went and created a basic HTML file called enterinfo.html, and right here you can see I have the PHP script that we're going to be making, and it's going to process, meaning the PHP script is going to process every bit of information that is in this basic HTML file. So so when the user comes over here and enters some information like that and clicks on submit, it's going to jump over to learn php.php and it's going to execute everything. And all I have here basically is just a form and I'm going to be using the post message which is going to send the data input into this form via a separate message versus using the get method which is going to send the data entered by appending it to the end of the URL. I am proposing that everybody watching this video knows HTML. But if not, I have a link in the description underneath the video to my HTML tutorial. You learned HTML in about 15 minutes with that one. Then I have a basic table here and name and address and the ability to input this information. And then at the very bottom here, I have a submit button. So very, very simple. So let's start writing the PHP code. Okay, so as you can see here, it is still HTML even though we are creating PHP files here. And you basically just embed PHP code between tags. And those tags would be PHP, just like this. And then it would end at the bottom with a question mark and a closing tag. And it's just as simple as that. Now one thing to remember is the PHP code that you write here in this file isn't going to show if the user tries to view source. And very, very important, you're going to have to put a semicolon to finish every PHP statement. Now, of course, if you have multi-line comments, you're not going to have to put a semicolon after those and also you have single line comments and also there's another single line comment which is just the number sign so just another okay so those are the different types of comments you can use inside of PHP now if you use the PHP statement echo it is basically just going to output onto your screen whatever you put between the quotes so you could say something like data processed and then put a closing tag here and then a semicolon at the end and that's going to output that on the screen let's just come over here hit submit and you can see data process shows up right there. Now one thing to note here is I'm using double quotes here and basically what double quotes are going to allow you to do is use escape sequences. So for example if I wanted to put double quotes inside of here around data processed I'd have to come in here and put a backslash and a double quote and another backslash and a double quote and you can see that those showed up here on the right side of the screen. If however I was going to use single quotes I would not be able to do this because single quotes ignore escape sequences and you're also not going to be able to print out variables directly inside of this statement with the echo. I'm going to show you that here in a moment. Let's do something right here out of the gate that's a little bit interesting just to show you how cool PHP can be. Let's go and print out all types of date information onto the screen. I'm going to go date default time zone set and I'm going to use here the coordinate universal time which is a standard to use. And then what I'll be able to do is come in here and use all of these different symbols to define exactly what type of date I want to print out on our screen. So let's just come in here and let's just create this. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use echo again and then I'm going to call date and let's say that I want to put the hour. Well, you can see right here, hour, 12 hour format. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put a colon inside of it. Then I'm going to want minutes, which is I, as you can see above, seconds, and then U would be milliseconds. I could then type in A for lowercase am and pm. I could put a comma inside of there, then put an L for the full text for our day, capital F for full text for the month, day of the month. And then if I wanted to put a suffix on it, like first, second, third, I just put a capital S there, put the year in with a capital Y, and then an E will print out the actual time zone that I'm going to use, which is going to be UTC. Close that off with another single quote, and there you can see date processed, and then it's going to have the exact time in milliseconds, p.m. Saturday, August 19th, 2014, UTC. So I just wanted to show you real quickly how to do that, and of course all the code that we have here is available in the description underneath the video. Now whenever we look back at our HTML here, you can see that I have the names defined for username, street address, and city address. Well, they enter that information. How exactly am I going to be able to go in and grab it and use it inside of my PHP code? 
Well, it's rather easy. I'm going to put a dollar sign in here, which is how you start all of your variable names, which is where you're going to store your information. I'm just going to call this user's name. And then because the HTML used the post way of passing information, I'm going to type in dollar sign underscore post, put a bracket, and then I'm going to type in the username, which is the name that was defined in the HTML code, and then go right like that. And that's going to be able to get me all of that data that was passed in there quite easily. And then I could get the street address, and the city address in exactly the same way. Now it's very important to understand how to define your variable names. Basically they're all going to start off with dollar signs and then the very first letter here is going to have to be a letter and then thereafter you're going to be able to use letters, numbers, or underscores to define them. Another thing that's important is user's name is going to be different than user's name with a lowercase n because variable names are case sensitive. And another thing that might be really weird is whenever you create a variable it is automatically going to be given a data type whenever it receives a value. And all the possible data types are either going to be integers, which are going to be whole numbers without decimal numbers afterwards, floats, which are going to be decimal numbers, strings, which are going to be just a series of characters, booleans, which have the value of true or false, arrays, or objects. And arrays are just boxes inside of boxes, a whole bunch of different items inside of those. And we'll get more into that later on in the tutorial. And if you're wondering, by default, a variable will get the value of null. So that pretty much covers everything about variables. And let's go and echo some more information out on a screen like our user's name that the users type in there. So you just go user's name just like that and there it shows up. Now you can do something called string concatenation. So let's say I wanted to put a break after every single one of these strings that I print on the screen which would be very useful and very helpful and be able to see everything. I could then just put a period inside of here followed by whatever I want to show on our screen. Then let's say I want to do street address and city address. Make sure you have a lowercase a right there and then save this, jump over here and there you can see it printed everything out on the screen and also put the line breaks inside of there. Another thing you can do with text is use what's called a here doc syntax which is basically let's just come in here and create a basic string. What you could do is have your string go over multiple lines and all you're gonna have to do is put these little sideways carrots inside of here, then you're going to have to define pretty much anything that won't show up in your string. Then what this is going to allow you to do is go the customer's name is and just keep going. And then you just type in user's name and they live at, and then we type in street address in city address and then you could throw your break statements in there if you'd like and at the very end you have to make sure you do this make sure there's no white space before this and then you're going to type in EOD exactly what you have it above and then you could just come in here simply and go echo and string and there you can see customer's name is Derek and they live at 123 Main Street in Derry come and get rid of some of this stuff Another thing you can do, of course, is define constants, and they are pretty much exactly what you think. They are values that cannot be changed. So if I want to put pi inside of here, there we go. And then I would simply be able to come in here anytime I want and go echo the value of pi is, and then uppercase. And you would want to use uppercase with all your constants. And there you can see that it printed out just like that. Of course, like every other programming language, you're going to be able to do all types of different forms of arithmetic. And I'm going to show you other different ways to print stuff out here on our screen here in a moment. So let's say that I wanted to print out on the screen whatever 5 plus 2 is equal to. Put that period inside of there. And I'm going to go 5 plus 2. And let's do this for a whole bunch of them. So let's do a subtraction and let's do a multiplication, which is a star, and let's do a division and modulus, which is going to return the remainder of a division. And of course, change these guys over here as well. And then throw in another break statement. Another thing you can do also is let's say you wanted to cast to an integer. So let's come in here and if we do this division here, it's going to come back two and a half, of course, because five divided by two is two and a half. Let's say, however, I wanted it to show up as an integer or cut off the decimal place. I would just put integer inside of these brackets like that. And of course, you're going to be able to do that with all the different data types. So if you wanted it to show up as a change from an integer to a float or a double, for example, which is just a number with a decimal place, you would just type in double inside of here instead. But we're going to leave this integer. You could also do the same thing with string. Of course, just type string inside of there. And there you can see all of our arithmetic show up there on the screen, right there. 
and you can also see this doesn't show 2.5 it just shows 2. Another thing we can do is let's come in here you can use a shortcut so let's say that we have a random number and let's just give it the value of 5 and we wanted to add 5 to random number and then output it on our screen plus change the value of random number well we could just come in here and go random number and then plus equal 5 or we could change that to 10 just so it's not confusing. So what this is going to do is take the value of random number, which is 5, add 10 to it, and then save it back to random number. And there you can see it shows 15 on the screen. And of course you're going to be able to do that not only with the plus, but you're also going to be able to do it with the minus, and multiplication, and division, and modulus. So those are some shortcut ways to add numbers to themselves. Another shortcut we can have here is we can auto increment by one very, very easily. Uh, there's actually two ways to do it though. So let's go in here and let's just do a random number is equal to and show that on our screen. And let's just go plus plus random number and I'll throw a break statement in there as well. And make sure it's between quotes. And then we're going to use the other way to auto increment or add one to a value in a shortcut way. We're gonna put the plus plus after it and we can take that right there and you're gonna see here in a second the difference between the two of them. And there you can see it. Now whenever you put the plus plus before the actual variable name, what that's gonna do is it's going to add one to it immediately and that's the reason why it shows on the screen. If, however, you put the plus plus after, it's going to use the original value for random number in whatever you're doing, and then after it's done using it, it's then going to add one. So if you would then do an echo down here, like that, now it's gonna be seven, and there you can see it is seven. Another thing that's kind of interesting is you can kind of make a, either create a reference to a variable or make a copy of a variable, however you wanna look at it. So let's say I wanted to go reference to number, I could then go equal to, put an ampersand inside of there, and then point at random number, right like that. I could then go into random number and give it the value of 100, and then come down here and call echo again. And I'm gonna put single quotes in here this time because I don't want the value for my variable to show up here in, in here. I want the actual name to show up inside of there. So that's why I'm using single quotes this time. And I could go reference to number, and you can see 100 shows up. So if the value for random number changes, this is gonna change as well because I went in here and turned this into a reference to random number. So I'm covering pretty much everything here. Another thing, let's go in and talk about if statements. Now there are many different ways to compare values inside of PHP, just like most other languages. You have equal to, you have not equal to, you have less than, you have greater than, you have less than or equal to, and finally you have greater than or equal to. So let's go and use those guys. And then we have a, a couple other ones that are a little less known. We have the three equals in a row, and what this is gonna do is say if two values are equal and the same type, and another thing you could do is go put the exclamation point in there, and this is going to check if it's not equal or the same type. All right, so let's use these comparison operators in a useful way. So what we're gonna do is execute different code based off of different conditions, and an if statement works great for that. So let's say if five is equal to 10, in that situation, we're gonna to wanna to put our curly brackets here, and then inside we're going to have all the code that's gonna execute if that is true. So we're gonna come in here and just say five is equal to 10, which we know is not true. Another thing we could do is, let's say we wanna check another condition, or let's go and just talk about the default first. If you put else inside of here, if five is not equal to 10, then this code is gonna show up. And we'll go echo is equal to five, not equal to 10, right like that. And if we execute it, you can see that five is not equal to 10. Now what I started to allude to there is the situations in which we would want to actually check multiple different conditions and perform multiple different operations based off of that. So let's say we have a grocery store and it offers discounts based off of the number of purchases. So let's say somebody went in and wanted to purchase four oranges. Of course, put the equal sign inside of there. And then another thing the store sells is bananas. And let's say somebody wanted to buy 36 bananas. Now the store owner wants to come in here and see if the user goes and buys more than 25 oranges and also more than 30 bananas, they're gonna give them a 25% discount. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna come in here and we're gonna say if, and we're putting multiple brackets around that, num of oranges is greater than 25. But how do we check for 
and multiple different situations, multiple different comparisons. Well, we just put the and symbols inside of there, right like that, and that's going to allow us to check if both things are true. And these are called logical operators, these guys right here, and I'm going to show you the other two logical operators in a second. And we'll go num of bananas greater than 30. So if they want to buy more than 25 oranges and more than 30 bananas, we're going to give them a discount. And in this situation, we're just going to echo out on the screen 25% discount right like that. Let's say they want to offer other discounts, however, in situations in which they don't buy enough. In those situations, we're going to type in else if. And let's save ourselves a little bit of time. Let's just copy this, paste that in there. And let's say we're going to give them a 15% discount if they buy more than 30 bananas. Or this is how we're going to be able to check and get a true response if either of these are true. So if they buy more than 30 bananas or they buy more than 35 bananas, we're going to do a couple other nice discount things for them. And in this situation, again, we'll go 15% discount. And let's go in here and do one more so I can show you the final logical operator that's available, and that is not. So what happens if we want to check if something is not true? Well, you just put the exclamation point in there like that. And then I'm going to check num of oranges less than five. So if they're buying at least five oranges or they're buying at least five bananas, we're gonna give them a discount. And in this situation, that discount is gonna be a 5% discount. And then we can use our else statement again here to handle any default situations. And we'll just go like this, and we'll just say, no discount for you. And you can see right here, 15% discount, and the reason why is the bananas. I ordered four oranges, which in this situation doesn't fit this condition. However, I ordered 36 bananas, which does fit this condition, and that is the reason why 15% printed out. Then inside of PHP, we have another thing. In we get in a situation where we want to assign a value to a variable based off of a condition is true or false, and it is called the ternary operator. And basically, the way it works is you have your condition followed by a question mark, and then you're going to have the value that's going to be assigned if true or value if false is going to be assigned. And the basic way that this is going to look is let's come in here and let's say we have biggest number we're going to store inside of here and equal to. Then we're going to have our condition. So we're going to have 15 greater than 10. Of course, these could be variables and not just straight numbers. And then we're going to say that we want to store 15 inside of biggest number if it's the biggest or 10 if it is the biggest. And then, of course, we could go echo biggest number. And there you can see 15 showed up. Another way we could do conditions inside of PHP is using a switch statement. And you're going to use a switch statement whenever you have a very limited number of possible values. So let's say we want to make different decisions or print different things based off of the username that gets passed in our HTML. Well, you're going to type in the variable that you're going to be checking for, user's name in this situation. And then you're going to type in case the user's name has the value of Derek, and you can use doubles or strings or anything inside of here. Well, in that situation, we're going to type out, hello, Derek. And then we could do the same by creating a couple more case statements, or let's just create one more. That'll solve it. Let's say it is Sally, and you're also going to want to come in here and type in break, which is going to throw you out of the switch statement and continue executing code afterwards, but it's not going to come down and check if it's Sally and waste time. And then, of course, type in hello, Sally. And then we want to come in here and also type in a default answer or code that we want to have execute in that situation. And we're going to type in echo, and we'll say something like hello, valued customer. And then type in break. And there we go. And we know that I entered Derek previously. And now you can see hello, Derek shows up. So that's a switch statement. Now very often you're going to want to perform actions until a certain condition is met and a while loop works great for that. But one thing we have to do is first come in here and define some way for us to get out of the while loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue incrementing the value for number until it is greater than 20. And of course this is going to have to be created or initialized or whatever you want to refer to it as outside of the while loop. Then you're going to type in num and we're going to continue executing code inside of this loop which is defined by these curly brackets right here. And then inside of it we're going to type in, let's go and auto increment that by one each time. And you're going to have to always do that inside of while loop as well. And then let's go and put commas inside of here and we're going to print out these inside of the browser. And there you can see it was an easy way to be able to print 1 through 20. Another thing you can do is go and use a for loop, which is going to pretty much perform exactly the same actions that you saw with the while loop, 
but it's going to do it in a somewhat more compact way. So let's just leave the while loop there and I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same thing with our for loop and we're going to use for loops again later on in the tutorial in an example. So we're going to define number is equal to one in this situation and I use zero up here only because I use this increment right there and that's the reason why it's going to switch to one and then it's going to print. Remember that's the way that works. And then I'm going to come in here and define the condition. I'm going to keep doing this as long as number is less than or equal to 20. And then I'm going to define how the variable is going to be incremented each time through our loop. And I can just go echo and num. And then I could print a comma out inside of there. But one thing that sort of bothers me is after this 20 right here, I have a comma. It's also going to give me an excuse to go and talk about something else. So let's say I wanted to come in here and say if is not equal to 20. Well, in that situation, I'm going to print out my comma. However, if it is equal to 20, I could come in here and end this in a couple different ways. One way to stop looping is to use that break statement just like before. What that's going to do is jump us out of our for loop immediately. If I wanted to be really crazy, I could come in here and type exit. What exit's going to do is stop executing my PHP script altogether. But I don't want to do that. I just want to stop executing the for loop in that situation. And you can see here, if I jump over, execute, that it's going to print 1 through 20 again. But in this situation, it got rid of the comma at the end of the 20. Another thing that's very useful, I talked about them for a brief second before and that is arrays. And make sure you don't have any of these little trailing little jibblies here because that'll cause all kinds of errors. Make sure you have everything cleaned up. Now an array, like I said before, is gonna allow you to store multiple different types of values. So let's say I want to come in here and type in my best friends and store them all in one place. Well, an array is just a box of boxes and I'm gonna put Joy inside of here and I'm gonna put Willow inside of here and I'm gonna put Ivy inside of here. There you go, that is an array. Boxes inside of boxes. Now, each of these boxes is going to have a label. The very first one is going to be 0, and then 1, and then 2, and that's the way it is. However, in PHP, you can change that. If I want to echo out onto the screen some information that is inside of an array, I just type in the array name, and then put a box, and then the label for the box, close that off. And there you can see it printed out on the screen just like that. You can also come in here and add items to our array quite easily. Just go best friends and let's just give it an index that doesn't exist, right like this. Then let's say I got a new friend named Steve. There you go. And he's in the array now with all my other friends. Let's do it in a more interesting way, however. And that more interesting way is a for each statement, which is going to allow me to cycle through all of the different items inside of my array. And all I need to do is give it the array I want to cycle through. And then, don't put that little comma inside of there. Instead, you're going to put as. And then i got to give it a temporary holding field or temporary variable, which each of these items is going to be stored in temporarily. And then I could do something like echo and friend. And there you can see I printed them all out on the screen all in one place. So that for each block is just for arrays. Another thing you can do is create key valued pairs for the arrays, which is very much like all of the other arrays or this one array we created here, except in this situation, this has the key of zero or the index of zero. This has one, this has two, and this has four. If I wanted to define what the keys are going to be, I could do something like customer is equal to, and I'm going to create an array again. Then I'm going to give it the specific key I want this data to have, equal sign with that bracket right there. And let's say I want to have the user's name be stored inside of there. Put a comma. I could then go street. That's the key. And you could store basically any type of data inside of here. It doesn't have to be using variables in a situation like I have. I could type in city. And you're going to be able to access this data using the keys just like you used the indexes before. And then close that off. And there's the whole thing right there. And in this situation, I could still use a for each block as well. And I'm going to show you how to use that. We're going to type in customer, which is the array I want to work with, as, and then key, and value. Key valued pairs. What's that there? And then I could go echo, key, concatenate this, and put in a colon. And then I could type in also my value, and execute that over here. And it's going to print out my name, my street, and the city. Another thing you're going to be able to do is combine arrays. This is so easy to do. Um, let's just say we want to store this information in best friends, whether this makes sense or not. So if I want to take the customer data and put it in best friends, like let's say I decided that 123 Main Street was a best friend, whatever. Let's just go best friends and just put a plus sign and customer. 
and now they are joined. They are all one array, but they have different keys. You can also do comparisons between arrays to find out if they are equal. In that situation, just use the equal sign. Not equal, there you go, it's the same thing. If you want to check if they have the same value, same order, and same data type, however, you're going to have to put three equal signs. So there's a way to compare arrays. Another thing we can do is come in here and create a multi-dimensional array. Just, just get rid of all of this. So let's say we wanted to go and create a customer's array is equal to, and again, you're going to type in array, right, like we did before. And then you just put an array inside of an array. That's what a multi-dimensional array is. And then we could have like customer's names, for example, and one, two, three main, and we could put in a zip code or something, 15212 or something. And then we want to create more of these guys. Let's go in here and just copy this, save some time. And let's say that we wanted to have Sally be in here. 125 main, da 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 da. And then make sure you close that off with the proper brackets. We could then cycle through these using a for loop. So we'll just go for. And we'll say that we want to get our row is equal to. And row is just a name, just like any other. You can put anything inside of there. I'm just typing in row because it makes sense. So as long as row is less than 3, remember we start at 0, 1, 2. And then we're going to auto increment row with our for loop. And then we're going to put another for loop inside of here. So we'll be able to cycle through our columns. Columns going to start off with 0. Wow, columns is less than 3. We're going to continue cycling through here and here we'll increment it and then we'll close off our for loop right like this and then we can go echo and customers which is the name of our array and if we want to print out the row data do that and the column and then let's say we want to put a comma in here between all this different data we have and then we want to come in here and throw in a break statement you'll see here in a second what it's going to print out on the screen and there you can see it printed everything out there on our screen so that's multi-dimensional arrays now there's a couple other very common array functions let's say you wanted to sort your array well you would just type in this is a function which we're going to get into later on what you do is just type in sort and inside of the brackets put your array name and this is going to sort in ascending alphabetic order if you would come in here and put another comma in right there and type in sort numeric it'll sort in numerical order or if you type in sort string it's going to sort everything as if it is a string of characters a sort is going to sort the arrays with the keys it's going to keep the keys together k sort is going to sort by the key names instead of the actual values and you could put an r in front of any of these guys right here and it is going to give you a reverse sort just like that now let's get into strings which are just a series of characters and let's go in here and create a random string and let's throw some empty space here in the front and then type in random string right like this and put some white space down here now let's say you wanted to make sure you close off with the same quote that you started with now let's say you wanted to go and actually trim off the white space on a string how would you do that well another thing that's very useful is to be able to see the length of the string so you just use strlen or string length and we're going to type in random string and then we'll throw a break statement in there now if you want to trim off the left space what we're going to do is with this guy we're going to go l trim that's going to get all the white space off of the left side of our string if you would want to do pretty much the same thing on the right side of the screen you're going to type in r trim not very common to use those guys though and the number one way i'm using string length here just to show you how the string changes based off of using these trim functions and I'm going to use trim. That's going to get rid of all of the white space. And there you can see the original string length was 29. After we got rid of all the white space on the left, it was 19. After we got rid of the white space on the right, it became 23 because there was more white space on the left than on the right. And then after we call it a full trim, which got rid of all of the white space on the left and the right, we have a total string length of 13. Now, I have been using echo for everything so far, but there's another way to print information on the screen, and that is called printf. And you're going to use printf because it's going to allow you to format strings on your screen, just like echo does. So let's go in here and show you the difference in what echo would look like versus printf. You're going to be able to use all kinds of conversion codes to convert your data as well. So with echo, I'm going to go the random string. Now, if I would put a dollar sign inside of here because this is double quotes, the, this would actually show up here instead of random string. reason I didn't do that is random string. 
Uh, throw a break statement at the end there. And this is the printf version of it. Now with printf, you're going to put the bracket inside of there. And then you're going to say the random string is, and you're going to put a percent sign and s because we're dealing with strings. And then you're going to put your bracket inside of here. And then at the end of it, you're going to define what you want to show up where that percent sign and that s is, which is random string. Close that off and they look identical. There you can see right there. Well, if I would have spelled random string right, there you go, identical on our screen. One thing that is very useful though with printf is printf is going to allow us to use conversion codes for decimals, for example. So let's go decimal number is equal to 2.3456, whatever. Now we can go in here with printf. You can do all kinds of other things with printf, but I'm going to keep this somewhat basic. So let's go decimal number is equal to, and then let's say I only wanted two decimal places to show up inside of here. I could just go point two and f for floating point number or number that has a decimal place inside of it. Close that off and then decimal number and it's going to just show me two decimal places like you can see right there. Now there are other conversion codes. If you want to convert an integer, so if decimal number was actually an integer into binary code, you would put a B inside of there instead of an F or an S like you saw before. Integer to characters, you just put in a C, it's gonna automatically do it for you. Integer to decimal, double to float. Integer to octal number, string to string or integer to hexadecimal. Those are the different types of codes you would use in those situations. Another thing that is very useful in regards to strings anyway, is we're gonna be able to change the case of the different letters quite easily. So let's say we go echo string to uppercase. So if we want the whole entire thing to be uppercase, just str to upper, and then we would type in random string, which is the string we have here. If we wanted every character to be converted into lowercase, string to, and then change upper to lower. And if we want all of the first letters to show up in uppercase, we would type in UC first, uppercase first. And there you can see they did exactly what you thought they did. You could also come in here and convert strings to arrays or convert arrays back into strings. So let's say that I want to take my string I have here and convert it into an array. Well, you just type in explode and think of an array exploding and all the pieces falling into boxes. What you're gonna do is type in here what is going to divide these strings and it's gonna be a space because random string has a space inside of there. And then you're going to type in here the string that you want to explode. And let's say you wanted to also define a maximum number of pieces that go into an array. You could type a two inside of there in that situation or you could leave it off altogether. And then let's say you wanted to convert the array back into a string. You just go string two array is equal to and you would type in implode. And again, you have to define what is gonna separate all of the different parts that are in the array. And then you're gonna pass inside of it array for string. And in that situation, you don't have pieces. And make sure you spell implode right. If you wanted to just find part of a string, let's just go part of string, you would use sub string like that. And we can come in here and let's just type in random string. You could use variables, but, and then let's say we wanted to go from the zero index and get a maximum of six characters. Print that out on the screen for us. And you can see it started at the zero index and got the first six characters and printed those out on the screen. You could also compare strings. So let's say I have man and give it a string of man. And then I have man hole like this, like a manhole cover and man hole. And I could do something like echo string compare. So these are really easy to remember after you use them a little bit because the names are very logical. We can compare the different strings here, see what it comes back with. It comes back with negative four. Now what this does is if these two strings are identical, what it's gonna do is return a zero. If it returns a positive number, which here it did not, it returned a negative four. That means the string one or man is greater than string two. It's just alphabetical order. And if it returns a negative, that means that string one is less than string two. And then you could also come in here and go string case compare if you want to completely ignore the case of the letters. A couple other ones we can use here for little string functions is string string. So let's say we go echo and the string, string, string. What this is going to do is return every character after the string that we are going to be looking for. So in this situation, 
dollar sign and let's type in random string that we had before. It's going to return everything in the string after it locates the word string inside of it or the string inside of it. The string string, see, that's the string of random string. So it found string and it's going to print out everything that follows thereafter. And you could of course come in here and put an I inside of there and it is going to be case insensitive again. Another thing we could do is let's say we wanted to get the location of a match. You would just type in string position in this situation and execute and it's going to come back with seven which if you count over it is string the s starts as the seventh character inside of this string we have right there and then we could also come in here and replace strings so let's say we go new string is equal to string underscore replace and let's say we want to replace string with the word stuff in the string called random string and we could go echo and now it says random stuff instead of random string and I guess that basically brings me to the final thing I'm going to cover which are functions if you want to create a function which is going to allow you to reuse your code over and over again you would just type in function and then you could do something like add numbers which is going to be the numbers or the name of the function and then the different attributes that you're going to allow to be sent into this function to be executed and you're going to have your curly brackets again and then you could have a return statement which is going to return numbers after you can put any code inside of here but let's just say that we want to come in here and add these two numbers together and then return them to whoever calls for this function to execute and then to call this function we could just go echo we do something like three plus four is equal to and then a period and add numbers three comma four and that's going to pass it in there and it's going to echo all of that information out on the screen and there you can see three plus four is equal to seven so there you go guys that is a rundown of pretty much everything about php except for regular expressions and object-oriented programming if you guys want me to cover those just leave a question or comment down below otherwise till next time